Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Saturday of the third week of Advent. And being December 17th, we're beginning a special season of preparation for the celebration of the Nativity. As I've talked about before, uh, Advent is a season of the already not yet, where we talk about and think about not only his first coming, but also his second coming. But beginning on December 17th, we have seven days of what are called the uh, seven days of the O antiphons. And this comes from a beautiful uh, antiphon at the beginning of our liturgy where we celebrate seven specific ways in which we prepare ourselves for the feast, the solemnity of the Nativity of Christ. And so each of these antiphons today, it's O wisdom. Each of these antiphons brings with it some beautiful uh, perspective that we can use for celebrating uh, this particular time of year. A reading from the beginning of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob. Jacob the follower of uh, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Amminadab. Amminadab became the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asaph. Asaph, the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. Joram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amos. Amos, the father, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abiad. Abiad, the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok the father, became the father of Achim. Akim, the father of, Ali, of Eliad. Eliad, the father of Eliezer. Eliezer became the father of Mothan. Mothan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who was called the Messiah. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. And from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you are probably wondering if you're still with me even. <laughs> Why in the world, Father, did you read the entire genealogy from that chapter? Well, that's the reading for today. And <clears throat> as cumbersome as it might be, it provides some perspective and foundation for our faith that is really beautiful. And so I wanted to read it in its entirety, and then I want us to reflect on it in a few ways. Number one, um, you know, in a sense, the genealogy gives us a summary of the story of the Bible. We have the entire Old Testament, and the entire Old Testament is leading up to the coming of the Messiah. It is 
always looking forward to the Messiah. So many times throughout the Old Testament, we have that anticipation. And in particular, one of the things that we have here is David being the focal point. That's why at the end, uh, Matthew talks about 14 generations to David and then another 14 generations to the exile and 14 generations to the Messiah. So David is kind of right there in the middle. Now, there are actually more than 14 generations, but Matthew picks this out in order to really give uh, the focal point, the spotlight on David, because David and the covenant with David was a covenant leading to the coming of the Messiah. And this is seen in the very first verse where it says, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, which means it's going to go <clears throat> uh, from the beginning to Jesus in terms of its uh, tracing. But the, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, which is the son of the, of the uh, covenant uh, and, and the Messiah, and the son of Abraham, which is the beginning of the covenant that God made with the nation of Israel. So this is going to be a very critical genealogy. And then we have all of these historical figures from the Old Testament that are traced up to the time of Jesus. And so it's a true story. What we have here in the coming of Jesus is something that truly happened in the world. This is not just some made up ethereal Messiah that just appeared, but one who can be traced through all of salvation history. <clears throat> the other thing that we notice <clears throat> about this gene uh, genealogy that's very unique from other genealogies of the time is how inclusive it is. It talks about women and Gentiles. There are Gentiles in Jesus' lineage. And there are women that are included as a part. It's not just talking about the, um, uh, the, the fathers, but also linking it to certain key women that were a part of salvation history. The other thing we notice is that there are people like Rahab <clears throat> and others that have a, have, have a history, have a past, that even in the midst of having things happen in their lives, uh, you know, Rahab was a prostitute, but became one used by God in a mighty way, and it transformed her life. And these were also people that were fiercely faithful. And so we have within the genealogy all of these faithful people that, as they continued to serve God, brought about the coming of the Messiah into the world. It also shows that Je Jesus is the hope that was always forecast in the Old Testament and broadcast in the New. We have that forecast. This is what's going to happen. A Messiah is going to come. It's going to come out of the lineage of David, who is a son of Abraham. But with him is going to be, and in his lineage, is going to be the one who is the coming Messiah, the anointed one of God. And so Jesus is that very hope. And of course, the New Testament is him being broadcast, both talking about him and living for him. So very, very beautiful, beautiful time. And in this particular uh, gospel passage, we have the three periods. We have the pre-monarchical period, which deals with the patriarchs of the church. Then with David, we have the uh, monarchical period, the period of the kings. And then after the exile, we have that period where we have the uh, coming up to the time of the Messiah. And so these three periods really mark, again, this march through time, this march through history that lead us to Jesus Christ. So here we are beginning those, the eight days till Christmas and uh, beginning the seven days of the O antiphons, these beautiful antiphons that give us the, uh, the history of our salvation today in the genealogy. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 
Well, tomorrow we will visit, the Lord willing, day two of the O Antiphons, where we will again continue our preparation for the celebration of the coming of the Christ child at Christmas. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.